All right. Well, welcome everybody to another What's Cooking with Dr. Cook. Um, I'm so excited for today because we are doing an Irish cook along. We are going to be making box D, which is an Irish potato pancake, only we're going to be doing it two different styles, um, a traditional style and then a low FODMAP gut friendly version. So super fun. We're also going to have some Irish trivia. Um, I have a couple people cooking along with me tonight, including the wonderful Dr. Ashley Morrissey. So hello and welcome. Hello. <laughs> Happy early St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Happy early St. Patrick's Day to you. We also have the wonderful genius extraordinaire Jason Farantello cooking with us today as well. So hello, Jason. Hello. I was sharing to my socials. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I, I that's heard you start to talk time. about me. Hello. <laughs> well, yeah, everyone. I mean, you're cooking along, so shout out. I mean, <laughs> yay. Yes. I'm sure we're going to see your food at some point. Um, sure will. <laughs> so I wore a little bit of green because it's pre St. Patrick's Day, but um, I have my fighting Irish jersey on because go Irish. Um, my first question. If anybody knows the answer, please feel free to type it in the chat. Or if you want to come shout it out, that's also cool. But before lamb, lamb was used, what meat did an Irish stew traditionally contain? Stumped you all, didn't I? It was goat. Yes. Uh, I was going to say goat. Ah, you would have been right. Nah, I wasn't going to say goat. <laughs> <laughs> All good. <laughs> I, I, that's one, one meat I have not had. Ashley, have you had goat? I have had goat in my, uh, you know, my sort of life motto of I'll try anything once. Uh, I have had goat. Um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't say it was a favorite, you know, it's not something that's on my normal rotation of meals, but, um, I mean, it was not the worst thing I've ever had. It just had a, a different, I guess, a slightly different higher fat content maybe that I'm used to eating because I typically eat more lean meats. Um, and so the goat that I had had a slightly higher fat content, so it's sort of just wasn't something I was used to, but it was tasty. It was not anything that was, you know, outside of anything. I, if I had an opportunity, I would probably say sure, but I just don't cook it or anything. All right. I, I actually had goat once in Jamaica, and it was actually a goat that had just been sacrificed by a bunch of Jamaicans to bless a house they had just made. All right. It was weird and tasty. <laughs> yeah, actually, it sounds awesome. So it, what, was it like like a pig roast? Was it like a goat roast? Yeah, yeah, sort of earlier in the day, they finished building this house that they were gonna gonna stay in. And so yeah, they slaughtered the goat. And then trigger warning, <laughs> kind of encircled the house with that as a part of a ritual. Yeah, and then they roasted the goat. And then when the sun went down, we feasted. Yeah. No, that sounds that sounds kind of awesome actually. Um yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would love to know if they spiced it up with anything cuz I love my spices. Oh yeah, it was all extra done. All that and the accoutrement work. Oh. Oh. So I would try that that type of goat for sure. Um I I'm not sure about the the stew goat, but I would I would try the roasted goat, I feel. I feel like that's a little different consistency. If any of you want to cook along with us, um, in the fortune cookie is the link, the hot link that you can actually press to cook along with us. So we're making the potato pancakes. Um, with that recipe is also a cabbage mix and a parsley sauce to go with the um, Irish potato pancakes otherwise. Well, actually called box D. So 
would love for you to join us. We're going to get started on those in just a minute. Um, tonight on Fireside, there is another Firesider, uh, Trinity with Sight Candy, who is doing an entire show on like the history behind St. Patrick for St. Patty's Day, which just sounds super cool. So I think you all should check that out too, because, you know, I... Doing some of this trivia, I had no idea there was so much behind it. And I'm actually, you know, part Irish. And yeah, I just had no idea. There's so much behind it, so much history. But um, I know that Ashley has has a love for the Irish. Um, she she married an Irish, <laughs> an Irish man. So um, one of my questions, Ashley, is um, who is your favorite Irish actor? Oh, oh, gosh. I just wanted to hit you with a hard one, one first. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, for the longest time, he I feel like he was really uh, thought of as just sort of like, uh, you know, not a, a great actor. But I think after his term, a lot of like Colin Farrell, I think that was he's really done some uh, dramatic roles and stuff. And um, he's not hard on my eyes, but as I've mentioned before, I think I have maybe a genetic predisposition. If there's an accent, I, I just am predisposed to give you some points, even if maybe you're lacking in your, uh, in your trade. But no, I think, um, and there was another movie I recently watched with him, uh, where he fisherman and retrieves a woman from the sea who may or may not be a silky. And so I think he's a very good actor. Who was it again? I think you broke up. I'm sorry, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. Oh, out of all of them, I did. I wouldn't have guessed that for you. Just, I think because lately I've been watching some movies with him. I had rewatched The Lobster, and then there was um, what I was saying, where he was a fisherman, and pulled a possibly what was a silky which if you're not familiar with that sort of legend is women who were seals and would come on shore to find their husbands and leave their seal skins near the shore and uh, if they, they could stay with their land husbands for seven years in Irish folklore so wow yes and sometimes came but it was an, uh, it, but like I said, here lately I've just been impressed with him. So that's what springs to mind. But I think I could sit down and write a list and it would take me some time and I could probably categorize them and attributes and, you know, fine tune that. But that's just what springs to mind first off. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what I figured. I thought for sure Liam would be up there. <laughs> He's Scottish. Liam Neeson? Isn't he? Am I wrong? Yes. Is he Scottish or Irish? Well, I think we need a fact check because I I thought he was I thought he was Irish. Yeah. All right, maybe somebody can fact check for us while we take a look at our ingredients. I swear, I thought I thought for sure he was Irish. Maybe Alex can fact check for us. Um, Liam I, Neeson is Irish, confirmed by. Oh, thank you. I'm probably just thinking of. Yeah. And he has <laughs> a certain so set of skills. He has a very specific set of skills. He does. <laughs> I, you see, and the reason why I bring that up is because I'm almost certain that uh, <laughs> Dr. Morrissey and I have had multiple <laughs> sessions in my pavilion uh, with, you know, a glass of wine uh, discussing his, his sets of skills. And so I, I was pretty sure he was Irish. But, um, you know, ladies be talking. I feel like the skills y'all were talking about are not the skills he iterates to bad guys on. 
No, no, it definitely involved. What would we do if he were to come into our house and, and kidnap us for sure? <laughs> so, you know, always prepared. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I suppose we shall <laughs> talk about our ingredients here. Um, Ashley, you're making a traditional box seat, correct? That is correct. Okay, yes. so can you just go through your ingredients really quick? Sure. I have two cups of mashed potatoes, two cups of grated raw potatoes, um, two cups of flour. And so if you're using, of course, like an all-purpose flour, you'll need to add the salt, baking powder. If you're using, uh, you know, um, self-rising, then you don't necessarily have to add that. Then um, I think of it because it's one of these recipes that's so simple. I always think in my head, it's two cups of everything. So two cups of mashed potatoes, two cups of grated potatoes, two cups of flour, two cups of buttermilk, but that actually can be less. And I can touch on that a little bit more when we start making it, why it can vary. And, um, and really that's it. Then you need your uh, fat or oil to fry in. And then sometimes people do add-ins, but that's not really a traditional box seat. So it's a very simple recipe. Okay. All right. So kind of similar, a little bit different. Um, take a look at the ingredients. All right. So for the low FODMAP version, um, it's a one-to-one -one gluten free baking powder. Um, this is actually with uh, rice flour and whole grain brown rice flour. Also has a little bit of sorghum flour in there. So we have that, we have xanthan gum. We have a quarter teaspoon of that, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And we also have, so it's, it's kind of like you said, like similar um, amount. So it's a one and a half cups of the grated potato and one and a half cups of the mashed potatoes. But then it's three quarter of a cup of the gluten-free flour. And then one egg, one and a half cups of almond milk, and one tablespoon of olive oil. So that's how we're going to mix. I'm going to start mixing the mix right now. And I think, Jason, you're making the low FODMAP version too, right? Yeah, sort of. Sort of? Sort okay. of. Let me show where. Oh, wrong buttons. So, hello. I got instant mashed potatoes. Okay. Grated the potatoes. Um, two percent milk over here. Okay. Flour, baking powder, and cornstarch because I don't have any xanthan gum. Ooh. Olive oil and eggs. Ooh. All right. So we'll see. So a little this modified. Is, yeah, I, I I wild out in the kitchen, so we'll see what what happens here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um. They actually had this at the store, so it was the. Bob's Red Mill Xanthan gum, which is great for baking. Have yes. All right. So, so to, this is as I mentioned. The what? This is in the traditional recipe. I wanted to mention in the traditional recipe, something that I will typically do is actually when I grate my strain them. You're breaking up a little bit. Cheese sauce. All right, stand by. I'm going to change a setting and see if that helps. Yeah. Helps. Does that help? I think so. Tell us about the Hopefully. cheese ball. So, <laughs> don't you mean the Braunschweiger ball? <laughs> yes. So, typically, uh, when I grate the potatoes, I will. Um, uh, squeeze them through a cheesecloth and reserve the liquid. 
I unfortunately didn't realize I was out of cheesecloth until I started grating my potatoes, but the same thing can be accomplished. I just squeeze them by hand, kind of reserve the liquid. And what you wind up with, if you can see how your starch separates at the bottom of your liquid mm -hmm. from your potatoes. And so then what you can do is, and this is sort of the more traditional method, is you can add, like you pour off that more clear liquid at the top and just add the starch back into your batter as you start mixing it. And that will help you uh, as a binding agent. Oh. Um, and it makes them a little crispier. Ooh. But with starch, you have to be careful because if you overwork that, it will start to almost turn into like a glue. Gotcha. And so you can't uh, over mix that batter once you start adding starch back in. And, I, you know, and sometimes I just forego that all together. I don't strain them if I'm in a hurry. You know, that's the beauty of this rest of box tea is I think there are a million ways to get to a delicious end result. So. Well, I'm excited to hear that. This is my first time making it. It's, I find it to be a very forgiving um, recipe. I actually have doubled mine because I have the two children and I know they love this. So that's actually four cups of flowers. Awesome. Flowers. What did I do with my... Another thing I find that does help is I will actually refrigerate my mashed potatoes um, so that they're not warm. Because once again, it's, and this may be something you know, because I'm certainly not a cooking expert, but I think what I'm preventing is activation of the starch. Mm -hmm. That's so exactly it. By cooling those down before I start to get, I think people are going to get seasick because I do that. Uh, <laughs> by cooling those down before I put them into uh, those other ingredients, then I prevent that glue, that, come out, that glue-like substance from forming. Gotcha. But once again, I would not even say that's necessary. It's the big thing is just kind of not, not overworking the batter. All right. And not cooking it on a lower temperature, but I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah, that's what's going to be kind of interesting about this recipe. So the recipe that we're using actually calls for a lighter fare and doesn't use oil. It uses cooking spray. Yeah. So yes. we'll, we're going to see how that goes. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of the interesting thing about, you know, the box tea is, if you look at it historically, I think it can be found in, you know, referenced in recipes going back to like the 1700s. And um, I think originally it was maybe more of a fall dish, you know, potato harvest dish. So, you know, you get your potatoes and maybe for your fall celebration, you fry you up a lot of box. You know, of course, potatoes keep all winter in a root cellar. So it was something that could be cooked um throughout that that winter time now they are more seen at the celebration of saint bridget which is february the first and she is um the and i'm not catholic my husband's family uh were but my understanding is she's the patron saint of dairy um and cheese and dairy products and so i think the thought there is because box tea is often served with cheese sour cream you know different dairy type options um then that's where you get the association with saint bridget and that and maybe you're cleaning out your root cellar in the spring or something <laughs> using you need to use up your potatoes gotcha well what I've done is I put the grated raw potato, the mashed potatoes, 
the gluten-free flour, the baking powder, and the xanthan gum all together. And now I'm going to add my last three ingredients, which, is, which are the egg, the almond milk, and the olive oil, which I think is going to get this super wet. So I'm excited to see where this goes because it seems like it's already kind of That's exactly wet. what it did to mine. Super wet? Super wet. But I, after I worked it a little bit, I wish I could always go to. I don't need to be on there looking silly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that seems really wet. Yeah. I think, though, I think it's going to work. Ooh. We'll I see. mean, it does say to ladle it out. So yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's yeah. exactly what I went and looked at. I was like, wait, how does it, am I pushing this out? Where is this going? Right. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Huh. Excuse my elbow. <laughs> so, does anybody know which author is regarded as the best selling Irish born author? I'm sorry, what type of author? Irish born, okay. The best selling Irish born author oh, of all I'm... time. Best selling Irish born author. Okay, I don't know. Irish born author. <laughs> Uh, C.S. Lewis. Hmm. So The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I loved that series. I mean, I actually reread it as an adult because that took me to some magical places in my youth. And it was very stress relieving as an adult. How about favorite Irish musicians? Oh, gosh, now I'm afraid. I'm like, what if all that I know is wrong? Uh, <laughs> so as far as I would say Irish influenced, I have a love in my heart for, um, you know, even if they're out of like Boston, but like the Dropkick Murphys. Um, I love the Pogues. Um, we have, uh, I feel obligated to say house of pain. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love the house of pain. I, I actually are, are, is anybody in the House of Pain actually from Ireland? I highly doubt it. But yeah, no, love House of Pain. You know who actually got me in all of my feels when I was in like my like preteens was the Cranberries. Yes. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And um, don't laugh, but Enya... Oh, my gosh. Holy uh, time. I did point out. So the traditional recipe is going to be more like a dough. <laughs> so there is a, a substantial difference in consistency there. Yep. We're going to see how this goes. I'm, sure I'm not going to overwork it anymore. For the traditional, you really do. You want it to be, um, you know, it's going to be like a dough. I mean, um, it, it's just, I don't want to really mess with it much more of it. Well, in this recipe, it says this is going to be the thickness akin to a crepe. Okay. So we're going to see, um, I did want to show everybody, um, cause one of the things that they, 
do suggest for people who are following the low FODMAP diet is to use savoy cabbage. So savoy cabbage has the wrinkly leaves on it. Um, actually, it's supposed to be lighter and a little bit sweeter, but that was easy to find too, according to my husband at the grocery store. Well, Alex uh, had better luck than I did. I had to oh. go regular. All good. But I'm with it. It tastes delicious. I've already <laughs> done that. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Mine has been cooking as well. I went with the turkey bacon though. Because that's what Connor wanted. Thank you. I do look good. I know that. So yeah. Um, I think what I'm going to do is actually heat up my skillet. Are you guys ready to heat up your skillet yet? I have been, well, I'm ca I'm like I'm trying to do a pretty traditional thing. I'm cooking on a cast iron skillet, so it's been heating for a while. So. Hey, I think we have uh, somebody who is from Ireland. Bad Bunny? Yay? Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. Okay. Hopefully, we will not disappoint you with our um, box tea tonight. <laughs> and, um, I'm, really, I'm really hoping here that this is going to be okay with the, the parsley sauce and I know the, the cabbage and the, um, the bacon is going to be good because it, it already smells and looks good. But um. well, I'll tell you, I have a, a few things um, to go with mine. I have some sausages, Ooh. some smoked salmon, Parmesan cheese, sour cream, cream cheese, and then I have some bagels as well. But uh, a lot of times, I mean, I, my children eat these uh, like candy. So then I'm, uh, you know, if it's breakfast, they may put honey or syrup on it. Okay. Uh, you know, like a like a, a more of a pancake. But similarly, sometimes they'll go a completely opposite way. Think more like a hash brown. They will actually um, eat it with like, put a little more salt, pepper on it, eat it with ketchup. Okay. Uh, if I do a fry up and have like bacon and sausage in the morning I will instead of cooking it in butter cook it in the bacon grease and then that gives it a very distinctive flavor also so um it's it, that's the other thing as far as cooking you know just and so the different flavors I I was kind of thinking to myself that it would taste good with applesauce but so, yeah. I don't know yet I haven't tried it savory whatever and like I said, mine being a very much different consistency than yours, you know, mine is a, it's, it's like the, uh, what do they do at that Dairy Queen when they give you that uh, frozen thing and they like flip it upside down? It's a, right. uh, it's like a dough, you know, it's, uh, it's got that starchiness. Um, and this was where I was talking, I was going to mention though, you were saying you were preheating your skillet because you don't ever cook these on like a high heat. Um, yeah, so it says medium. Yeah, the rookie mistake, um, you know, was making these and they looked so beautiful on the outside and biting into them, you know, they're brown, crispy, it just looks gorgeous. And then uh, biting into them and it's still that raw potato. Oh, gosh. And, uh, you know, because there is, so you have the cooked mash potato but you also then have the raw grated potato so um you have to think, you have to cook it long enough at a low enough temperature to get that raw potato cooked okay and so i i typically oh and i'll show you what i'm cooking in in just a moment but um i usually do more medium low uh because in the cast iron it it you know, it does a great job as far as retaining heat and getting a good uniform heat. Huh. It's that kind of delicate balance. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all want me to yeah, be the canary? Okay. The what? I can, I can be the canary in the mine shaft. I'm ready to ladle. Yeah. Um, 
I, it's getting there for me, but if, All right, let's see it. Let's <laughs> if, do it. if you're ready, go for it. I'm going to do like a scoop here. Let's see. Oh. Hey. Okay. Let's see if I can get thin. All right. Um, I can't do this one. And he'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> so while that's going does anybody know what color was originally associated with St. Patrick uh, I do not me either ooh it was Wait. blue I was going to say no I wasn't I wasn't going to say blue uh <laughs> Get me every time. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> all right, maybe I can't get. All right, look at there. Yeah, Jason, he's getting. He's almost getting all the questions right. All right. Okay, I'll give you um, a multiple choice then. So, what are pear picking porky and Polly pineapple? A whiskey. B, card games. C, mushrooms. D, lollipops. Hmm. Mushrooms. Um, pear picking. <laughs> pear picking porky and poly pineapple. What are our choices again? Whiskey, lollipop. Whiskey. What was the other card thing? games, mushrooms, lollipops. I'm going to change my answer to whiskey. <laughs> because I feel like I'm getting to know you better. <laughs> <laughs> you are, but the answer is lollipops. Oh, okay. Oh. I like lollipops oh. too. So this is what, <laughs> this is what mine look like. So. Oh, yes. So I flipped mine. Oops. Ew, very pretty. Oh, thank you, thank you. Wow, I feel like this is my grapes, excuse big. Me. You're sitting in my fruit bowl, so I forget to turn my camera around. You're going to see all my fruit that I buy to eat and then throw out two weeks later, so. Jason, that looks really good. How'd you flip it that big? Dang. I think it's got the master. That monster spatula? Do you have one of those giant spatulas? <laughs> it's the spatulator. That is a oh. big, <laughs> you've got a big spatula. <laughs> I only have a small one. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like listening. Hmm. Eat to me. I tell my children, I'm like, patience is a virtue. And then I'm horribly impatient with my cooking. I feel like at least with I get to put it in the oven and like set a timer and I, I can walk away for a while, but then. And I set it and forget it. <laughs> All right. If someone in Ireland is telling you a story and says, we had a bit of gas that day, what do they mean? Well, Wendy it can't be flatulence. Yeah, like, uh, gas. Well, not a bit of gas. Well, like, so, uh, or, I mean, to have a gas, you can, like, you're having a good time. Oh, ding, ding, Ooh. ding, you got it right. Yeah. Apparently, it's to uh, have a bit of fun that day. I do not have that flipper, so now I'm having, like, flipping anxiety. <laughs> Oh no, and I think it's stuck. Uh oh. Gotta uh -oh. keep it moving. Uh, okay, I'm 
Okay, we'll have a mini one. Oh, it wasn't ready. Okay. Did you use, uh, so were you, you used a nonstick spray, you said, right? Uh-huh. Okay. All right, I'm I should have put, I should put my nonstick pan out here. <laughs> if this is a race, I am totally winning. Yes, you are. <laughs> All right, I put some cabbage in here, like so, like, like constructed. Now, let's fold it over. Doing my own camera work. Oh, my, my, my daughter was going to be my camera person. She didn't. She got Lego obsessed. <laughs> it's so pretty. All right, let's put some of this sauce on it. Hold on. All right, I'm going to have to flip that again. All right, and I put some of that stuff on it. <laughs> I put that stuff on it. That stuff. It looks so good. Thank you. Did so well. That's awesome. Let's see here. Let's uh, get a bite. <laughs> this is a train wreck. I need to this, get a different pan. Let's see here. Let me eat this. Mm, what do we think here, guys? Come on. Looks good. Pretty tasty. Yeah? I think I maybe need to lower it longer. And salt. Salt's not a bad thing. What am I thinking? No. Yeah. Let's do use the it one, for sure. My one concession to uh, health, I guess, is, is the using to this. So I use potassium chloride instead of the sodium chloride. Whatever it is, you want to make sure that you get your iodine so you don't get a goiter. Uh, yeah, I figure they removed my thyroid. Do I still have to worry about the goiter? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> Not everybody has their, their thyroid removed. So. <laughs> For those who have thyroids, yes. All right, so which of the following isn't a famous Irish brewery? A, Guinness. B, Smittix. C, Bulmers. D, Harp Lager. Mm. Okay, say Guinness, Harp. What were the other ones? Smittix and Bulmers. Some people in the United States would call Smittix Smith Wicks, but it's Smittix. Okay. So it's, uh, yeah, it's the other bomb bomb. Bombers. You are correct. I'm on the harp. Although I'm literally right now, like trying to inspect this, like, <laughs> where are you made? Are you, I have no confidence in any of my answers at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a Guinness and champagne is called. Is it is it a black velvet? Yeah. -oh. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, I should have made it smaller knowing I can't. Okay. I'm so proud of you guys for the how well you've done. Please give me confidence to flip this accordingly. You oh, got it. I got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So let's talk about this potato famine that occurred real quick. Mm -hmm. So 1845 to 49. So at that time in Ireland, the population was over 8 million. And over 1 million died from starvation and disease due to the failing potato crop, which actually, it was a disease of the crop itself. Mm -hmm. And then over 2 million emigrated to North America, Australia, and Britain. 
And then by 1926, nearly half of the population what it was before the potato famine happened. So that's an interesting fact. But trivia, what are crew beans? What are, say that one more time. Crew beans. Crew beans? Yeah, C-R-U-B-E-E-N-S. C R U B E E N S. Yes. Hmm. Is it an article of clothing? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, I don't know. Anybody else? Not me. Hmm? No. Oh man. Oh wait, Chris! Hold, hold on! Oh, oh, a bit. Let's see. Chris is going to tell us. Oh man! Hey, Chris. Ah. Yes, uh, Cruvines is the plural of cru. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. A lifesaver, lifesaver right there. I love when Chris does yep. same. Chris is our what's cooking P one. Yeah, he's been at every show. We got plans for that eggplant, too, Chris. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, next week, Chris. Right, who's oh. around behind me? This is just, this is just going to turn into a twofer. All right, Jason, I need one of your spatulas. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. It is what it is. I am going to take this little guy here and put him on a plate. And let these other folk here spread out a bit. Oh, I'm sorry, you're getting like my toaster. Not good at this. So I think these are all kind of, I think I have the too large pan on the too small eye, but that's okay. This guy, he's ready to be sampled. Ooh, man, this color. That looks tasty. <laughs> that's what I need. I think, Alex, I'm going to need you to come down and actually sample one. <laughs> hey, Victoria. Said that with such confidence. <laughs> Your sister, she's the professional box detaster. Because she's the professional box detaster. Well, she's professional. You're sim you're amateur still. Go get her, please. <laughs> so we're gonna let this just cook a little bit more. Hi, can I pop in again? Of course. So, so last week I took the eggplant that I had and I sliced it long ways, kept it attached by the uh, stem, and I accordion fanned it out. Okay. And then placed uh, uh, and tomato and all kinds of spices and herbs and olive oil, and then and then roasted it in the oven. Came out, and came, out was came out really good. Did you so put it skin here. side down or skin like when you you accordion it on the open side? You would just split. Uh, I yeah, I accordion it out, so it kind of was some of it was skin side up, some of it was uh, flesh side up. But right. I think next time I'm going to skin it. I'll be honest with you and make oh. medallions and just stack it like alternate. Ooh, yeah, that's a good. Mm -hmm. so that, that's parmesan. This is a guest taster. She's going to taste the box tea with sour cream and tell us what she thinks because, well, honestly, I couldn't keep her out of the kitchen any longer. Sure. And, <laughs> yes, as soon as she and the other one, I literally am now hemmed in on both sides. 
uh, because as soon as they heard me say, I'm going to sample this box, D, it was like, meow, meow, bookends. Like, <laughs> <sighs> All right. I'm glad to sample some more. Um, yeah. Okay. Sample away. I'll get the rest of it off the stove. I almost wonder if maybe my pan wasn't hot enough because it, these are taking an awfully long time to cook. So, and you said you have it on me. So. Yeah, I mean. It looks hot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it feels hot. <laughs> that was red. I'm just over here yeah. showing off my flipping skills, though. Yes, like what? Maybe uh, I don't know. Uh, they are exceptional. Oh. I think we should have one of those. Like, how many can you do in a row contest? I'm two in. Although I ate the first one, does that count? Well, no. I meant how many flips. Can oh. <laughs> I mean, I just did five right All there. Right. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna decorate this one to let Alexander try. We'll see what, what he says. It's a mixture you made with black butter and cheese. It was sour cream. Oh, no. Actually, we're not. We're going to cook it a little more. Buttermilk was the recipe. Would y'all like another one? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Moss. Moss. What, do we have a do we have a a review from our guest taster? <laughs> you have ours. Let's see. I'm sorry. Say that again, please. Oh. I can't, they can't quit eating long enough. <laughs> Three, Five stars. Yes. Oh, yeah. nice. So now I'm just trying. They're like, we need moss. Moss. Like, you are beasts. Like, this is what happens with these. Be Before I started making them at home, there's an Irish restaurant that's not very far from our house. Yes. And there were embarrassing times in my life because we would call and just order copious amounts of box tea. And it was a, you know, it was like a side, and uh, they would be like, "I'm sorry, you you said you wanted like ten orders of that," and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> it's what has been requested. It shall be done." And it was like, um, "Yes, there is some shame in my heart going to pick up, you know, three bags of potato cake." Hence why I had to start making them at home, I guess. All right. So the assembled is oh. it's not bad. Oh, thank you. All right. Oh, so good. I'm going to take it to Alex and see. Maybe he'll come on and tell you all how he feels about it. Bang. Dr. Morsey saw that flip. Yes. I'll get like a kick going like <laughs> some <laughs> 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 Count them as they go. I, don't like I mean that's the thing, y'all don't like smoked salmon, so Ooh, that would be real Alexander. good. Alexander. Try to join. Hey, this is I this, they're just you know, sour cream. They like it. Sour cream parmesan. I'll take a little smoked salmon, a little sour cream, and then that's like. Ah, oh, I'm on. Okay. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes. All right. I'm about to have my first bite. All right. I like it. It's it's um. Uh... This recipe is lighter, like it's more like a, a crepe consistency um, than the traditional box tea I've had before, but it's very tasty. That makes sense. I haven't I haven't had them before, but that the crepe they like the 
the consistency is real creepy. The kind of buoyance, it's got a bounce to it that feels <laughs> creepy. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm over here flipping. Y'all are missing flips. <gasps> just... Oh. Hey. <laughs> I flipped. Yay. I'm happy you got out the nonstick hookware. I think that's working much better. <laughs> It's a what little brown, but hey, it's working. I'm excited to try it. Um, well, I think it's been a very successful box deep cooking adventure. Honestly, yes, yes. And very, actually, very cool. um, uh, you can taste the difference in the cabbage. Savoy cabbage does taste different. I've never had it before, um, but it is, as advertised, lighter and sweeter. sweeter? So, yeah. yeah, it is. It has a little bit more of a... I mean, almost in the direction of like a carroty taste, I guess. Ooh. Yeah. That's quite good. I'll have to find it. Sweet, like uh, also, Rose Foods here in North Carolina, they just had a big old uh, row of uh, the Savoy cabbage right above the green cabbage. They were the same price, um, 89 cents a head. So can't beat that. What do you think, Irish man? This is very good. Very good. And you know it's not lying because it's not lying. No. I am. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm going to let this off one of kind of simmer up. This has been super fun. Um, thank you all for coming. I hope you join us next week. I know, Chris, we are going to make the um, eggplant that you are talking about. So please cook with us. Yeah. <laughs> We would love that. Um, I'm going to make 100 more uh, box tees here. So yeah, no, see you all later. I'm going to be making box tees all night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have box tees for dinner. And Al, do you mind taking that one off? Uh, they, uh, <laughs> like, they, they refrigerate well. I do recommend wrapping them in like a moistened paper towel. Uh, okay. You put them in the, uh, and, and this, of course, is for the original recipe. So I don't know about the FODMAP low FODMAP time, but I typically, when I'm keeping them, put like a low, uh, you know, a little lightly moistened paper towel with them. And that seems to help them kind of uh, not get so stale in the fridge and then uh, retain some of that crispiness. You can put them in an air fryer. I find them beautifully. Ooh, yes. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, and then also, of course, if you do want to like in a a frying pan. I find that's the two best ways to keep, out, keep the crispiness. Ooh, cool. Wonderful. Well, of course, the recipe is in the link, or you can find it on foodguides.com. And of course, um, there's more St. Patrick's Day shows on Fireside, actually today. So definitely check out um, Trinity's show. Uh, Sight Candy, he's having um, live Irish music, Ooh. which is really cool. And join us next week as we cook some eggplants. Um, I think they call it Eggplant Rockefeller on TikTok. <laughs> so we're going to do that TikTok trend um, and talk all about nightshades. And so it's going to be super fun. But thank you all for hanging out. And thank you, Dr. Morrissey. Thanks for cooking along, and Jason, thanks for cooking along, too, and to all of our taste testers and the wonderful audience for pumping us up as well. So, super fun Indeed. show. Indeed. As always. So, talk to you soon. I'm going to be flipping. Awesome.